Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ray and welcome back to our OpenGL ES and GL Kit video tutorial series. In this part of the series, you'll learn how to get started with OpenGL ES and get something very simple rendered to the screen. Here's what the app's gonna look like at the end of this part of the series. As you can see, it's just a simple green screen, but it's done with OpenGL. There are a few important concepts you need to understand before we start to dive into the code. The first is the concept of something called the OpenGL context. You can think of the OpenGL context as OpenGL's scratch pad. It keeps track of everything it needs to know in order to render something to the screen. So here you are storing all of the textures that you might be using in your game. You're storing all of the vertex buffers, which as you'll learn later, are just a series of vertices and all of the information for each vertex, like what color should it be, where's its position, and so on. You also keep track of different kinds of shaders, which you'll learn about. You also keep track of frame and render buffers and other types of buffers, and there's also the general state. So OpenGL is, is a state machine, so when you set something like the color that the screen should be cleared to, it will stay that color that you set it until you change it to something else next time. The context also has slots, to put different slots to put different types of things that it's working with, so it, it's just a big scratch pad. The way you create one of these contexts is very simple. You use a class called EAGL context, and you call it init with API and you give it an API level to use, which is either 1.0, 2.0, or 3.0. In this series, we're always going to be using 2.0. Remember back from the introduction that I mentioned that GLKit is split into four parts, and one of these parts is called GLKView and GLKViewController that makes getting started with OpenGL a lot easier and takes out some of that initial boilerplate code. That's what we'll be using here, so let's dive into what this does for us. The first part is GLKView. This is just a regular UI view that is set up to render to OpenGL. What you have to do is you have to set its context when you create it, and you also have to override a method to draw, and this is the signature for what it looks like. And that's where you put your OpenGL commands inside there. The second part of the mix is GLK view controller. The nice thing about this is it has an update method that is synchronized to the screen refresh. So typically the way a game works in OpenGL is you have, every time the screen is refreshed, first you do an update, and the update usually moves your 3D objects based on however you're animating it. For example, let's say you're moving something across the screen each frame, you'd move a little bit further across the screen. Um, and then after you do that update, then you render. So update, render, update, render. So in your update method, this is where you have a chance to uh, perform that update. And of course, a GLK view controller, usually its main view is a GLK view. There's one last thing to understand before we dive into the demo, and it's the concept of frame buffers and color buffers. You might have noticed this in the picture of the context earlier. It's just one of those things that's stored in the OpenGL context. Okay, so what's the difference between these two types of buffers? So first of all, a frame buffer is just a collection of other buffers. So in this example, you see that it has a color buffer and has a few other slots that I'm just gonna put question marks in for now and you'll learn more about those later. But one of those is called the color buffer. And you can think of this as just a grid of pixels. The GL view is set up to take that grid of pixels and put that inside the view every render. So in OpenGL, it renders to that buffer of pixels and then GLView takes that buffer of pixels and shows it into the screen. The reason this is important to understand is so that you can understand these two lines of code here. The first line of code is GL clear color. And this is set up to say, when you clear the color buffer, I want you to clear it to be green. And it takes the parameters red, green, blue, and alpha. Notice the red, green, blue, and alpha are all supposed to be numbers between zero and one, because that's just the way that OpenGL ES works. And, but I like to think of my colors in terms of numbers between 0 and 255 because that's what Photoshop gives. So I usually just divide the numbers I get from Photoshop by 255 to get it within the range that OpenGL ES expects. And the color you see here is just the green color that we use on our site. Once you've set that clear color, it's now set in the state and it's always going to be set to that color until something else changes it. And so to actually clear the color buffer, then you call GL clear and you specify what buffer it should be clearing. We want to clear the color buffer, so we pass in GL color buffer bit. If you wanted to clear one of the other buffers, there's different constants you can pass in for that as well. And remember, so now that that grid of pixels is cleared to be green, now the GL view will take that grid of green pixels and display it inside the view itself. Believe it or not, that's all you need to know to get started. So we're going to dive into a demo here. We're going to be doing four things. First of all, we're going to create a project just with a regular view-based application template. We're going to delete out that view, stick in a GLK view controller instead. We'll subclass that so we can override the 
uh, draw method. And then we'll implement that draw method to basically include those two lines of code you saw here to clear the screen to be green. All right, we're gonna create a new project here with the iOS application single view application template. And we'll name this hello OpenGL. Make sure the class prefix is set to RWT. And I'll just save this here to the desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna open up main.storyboard. And this template has created for me a regular view controller. Uh, I don't want that, I want a GLK view controller, so I'm just gonna delete that. And I'm just gonna search for GLK view controller and drag that into the scene. Now notice that by default, the root view of a GLK view controller is a GLK view, as you might expect. Notice a few other things. If I go to the connections inspector, the delegate for the GLK view is the GLK view controller. So where you implement the draw method is inside the view controller subclass. So we need to create a subclass for this GLK view controller. We actually already have a view controller file made for us here that the template started for us. So rather than create a new one, we can just reuse this. So first thing I need to do is import glkit using the new import keyword in iOS 7. And instead of a UI view controller, I'll just make this a GLK view controller. Next, I can go inside here, I'm gonna delete this. And inside view did load, that's a good place to set up your views context. Because when you create a GLK view, you have to set what EAGL context it should use. So first let's get a reference to the GLK view. Then let's set the views context. So notice that when you create a context, there's an init with API method, and you pass in the level of EA of OpenGLES API to use. So we want OpenGLES2 here. And that's it for creating the context. Now we just need to override the delegate method of GLK view called draw and rect. And here we're just gonna put in those two lines of code we saw from the slides. And the last thing we need to do is we need to go back to our main.storyboard, select the view controller, and set the class of it to our new view controller here. Now I can go ahead and build and run. And we have a screen rendered green done with OpenGL. All right, that's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you off with a challenge. The challenge this time is nice, short, and sweet. All I want you to do is create a little app that's called Red Alert that flashes the screen red and black and sort of goes back and forth between those. And then for the Uber hackers out there, we have something a little more challenging for you. So I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.